This video is all about modality, which is a feature used in language, particularly persuasive language, to create and refine meaning. So let's unpack it. Firstly, the definition of modality is looking at degrees of certainty, frequency and obligation within language. We call these three elements the modality of the language. Let's look at some examples. So if I'm talking about certainty, there's different ways I could go about it. I could say something is true, which is a high level of certainty, like I'm not really creating any room for doubt. But I could have just as easily say this might be true, which makes me seem a bit less certain. This could be true, or there is a possibility this is true. When we talk about modality, we usually describe it using words like high and low. So applied to this situation, this is true, we would say is a high level of modality. It's a high level of certainty. This might be true is probably still a higher modality, but it's not quite as high as it was before. We get into the lower end of the spectrum when we say this could be true. And of course, when we start saying, oh, maybe it's true or there's a possibility this is true, we're actually talking with a low level of modality or a low level of certainty. Let's look at a couple of other examples. So frequency is about how often something happens. So if you say I always get what I want, you're saying that there's a high level of frequency and that you're also being very certain about that. So we would say that's a high level of modality. I mostly get what I want is again, taking that down a notch. So we're getting slightly lower, but it's still fairly high. I sometimes get what I want. Now I'm starting to get into the lower, uh, the lower area. Every now and then I get what I want. Okay, so you should see a pretty clear difference between where I started at the top and where I ended up. So if I apply that language again, when I say I always get what I want, I'm speaking in very high modality. When I start to reduce that frequency or talk about a lower frequency, I'm lowering the modality. Now, here's a bit of a tricky thing just to keep your mind on. If I say I never get what I want, that's actually still a high modality because I'm showing that high level of certainty. So it's all of us, you know, so these things aren't always separate. They kind of relate and work together. Okay, so if I'm seeming less certain or showing kind of a less frequency or anything being less extreme in general, then I tend to be in a lower modality. Whereas when I'm very certain and very clear, it's always going to be a higher modality. Obligation talks about really how much you need to do it. You and I would both know that there's some things in life you need to do, and there's other things that you can do if you want. And that describes our level of obligation. I must clean my room. In this case, suggests that I need to do it. There's no negotiation. I should clean my room or I could clean my room lowers the level of obligation. It's kind of saying I don't need to do it, but I can do it if I want. And of course, when I get right down the bottom, if I'm not too busy today, I can clean my room, which suggests that it's not even really my first priority, but if I want to, then I can. All right. In this case, we apply that language again. When the need, the level of obligation is high, we say it is a high modality. When the obligation, when you know, if I don't need to do it, but I have the choice to do it, well, in that case, we would say that the level is quite low. So hopefully you can start to see a connection here in what I'm talking about in relation to modality. Okay, it's really interesting like that. Let's give it a bit of context, because what you need to really understand is that we change the modality of our language to suit different circumstances. That's what context is all about. When we change our language, we call this tempering. Okay, we temper an argument or temper our language to be appropriate to a setting. There's no right way to do it. So let me give you some examples. Let's say you're a boss at a company. Okay, you can see here, this guy looks pretty confident. He's speaking to his workers. If you've got a job, you might have a boss. So you might understand a relationship like this. How should he address his employees when he wants them to do something? He could say, you must finish today or else. What he's done in this case is he's speaking with a very high modality. He's being very certain and giving a high level of uh, obligation. 
Now, what might be the reaction here? Well, it could be that the employees think, oh, gee, this guy's harsh or this guy's being a bit full on. And that could actually compromise their perspective of him as a boss. Another way he could go about it, and possibly a more effective way, would be to lower the modality. Sure, the work needs to be done, but what he could say is, it would be great if we can finish this work today. All right, so what he's done here is he's communicated the same message, but he's lowered the modality. Now, we might assume that the people who are competent workers in this case are still going to finish the work, but they're not going to feel like the boss is being so harsh and so strict. So modality can have a lot to do with the relationships. Here's another kind of classic example. You might be having an argument with a parent and a common line that comes up in this case is, you never listen to anything I say. Now, this is, again, a really high level of nodality. And often, whenever you say something like, this person always gets this and I never get anything, your parent will roll their eyes and stop listening to you. Because it's not true what you're saying, and it's an exaggeration. And those things don't tend to be very well appreciated. In order to change the language, you could say, I don't feel that you're listening to what I'm saying. In this case, you're not saying that they never listen, but you're making it specific to the particular time that they happen to be speaking to you here. And in this case, it comes across much more reasonable and they're going to be much more likely to listen to you. But in this case, I've lowered the modality both times and it seems to maybe be better suited. But is lowering the modality always the answer? No. Consider a public speaker, in this case, a fairly nervous looking public speaker. If you want to really rally people to do something or to change something or to make a decision and you come up and you say, it would be really good if we're not too busy that we start thinking about taking some action. There's a very low level of certainty and obligation here. So you might argue that this speaker isn't going to have a great effect because he's not sure, strong and confident enough in what he's saying. Take a different example of a really effective speaker might say, we need to take action. In this case, we've raised the modality, we've raised the level of certainty and obligation, but we might argue that this would be much more effective. So it just goes to show that there isn't a right or wrong modality. It is about tempering your argument or tempering your language to suit the situation that you are in. So to summarise this skill, modality describes the level of certainty, frequency and obligation in language. We describe it as being either high or low. Okay, but there's no extremes or, or you know, whether, you, whether it's high or lower is all a matter of opinion. Okay, it's not an exact science. There is no correct way to arrange the modality of a sentence. It depends on the context. You can't say high is always good or low is always good. Okay, that in itself is very high modality. Uh, when we change the modality of language, we call this tempering. So the skill to take from this is that whenever you're communicating, you need to temper your language to suit the context of how and who you are speaking to. And that's what modality is all about.